So OpenAI has officially responded to Google's Nano Banana Pro AI image model. Just today on December 16th, OpenAI has rolled out the new ChatGPT images that they call it. And essentially all this is, is it's now GPT image 1.5. The model was GPT image one before. And so I've spent a lot of time testing it right when it was released today and comparing it to Google's Nano Banana Pro. So I wanted to put together a quick video for you guys, kind of comparing it on some real world use cases that I find myself doing all the time. So be sure to stick around for this full video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan. I appreciate you being here and I help founders and executives leverage AI by scaling content, saving time and building a strong personal brand online. And if you want to know my favorite AI tools, prompts and automation templates, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this in the video description or pinned comment below. And speaking of that free AI marketing essentials guide, I went ahead and put together some prompts for Google's Nano Banana Pro when it was released, but you can now rinse and repeat these on OpenAI's brand new AI image model. So if you want to get my favorite AI image prompts, again, you can get my free AI marketing guide below this video. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details and information about the new chat GPT images. I will leave a link to this page in the video description below, but this can be a good resource for finding ideas on what to create with OpenAI's new image model. It has a lot of different prompt ideas that you can copy and paste and try out yourself. I like the before and after comparisons from the previous GPT image model versus the one now. Um, so go ahead and explore that on your own time. Sam Altman will also post various things about about these types of chat GPT updates so you can look at his X or Twitter account for even more ideas. Now in terms of accessing this brand new image model within chat GPT, all you need to do is go to the website chatgpt.com and this is available to all users as far as I understand. Not just paid users, even free users of chat GPT can get this new image model. You should see something in the top left that says images and mine says new. I'm assuming that's what yours will say as well. And if you click that, you will come onto a page that looks like this. So it has this kind of prompt ideation thing right here where if you want to create a holiday card, style me, restore an old photo. So I like that they have these ideas if you don't know what to create or where to get started. Uh, you can try different styles on these images. And just like previously, I like now how it has the gallery where if we just scroll down below, you can access your entire history of AI image generations within ChatGPT. And I believe this goes all the way back to the days of Dolly 3, if I had to guess here. Um, from every single image that I've ever created with ChatGPT. I'm not going to scroll all the way down, uh, but that is how you access this brand new AI image model that's available to both free and paid users of ChatGPT. Now you can also generate images with this new model right from the main chat within ChatGPT. If you click new chat, click this plus icon and click create image, that will prompt the new AI image model. Or like previous models, we can also use this via API. It's already available in the API. And so here's the pricing page. I'll leave a link to this in the video description below. What I like about this is from text to image, and it's also the, or it's a little different from image to image, but from text to image, the pricing of G GPT image 1.5, which is this new model that I'm talking about here, is actually the same price as what you're seeing with the previous model, which is GPT image 1. Now you'll notice there isn't a mini version yet of GPT image 1.5. I would expect that to come soon, and that's super important if you're creating these images at scale with automations or agents, it can get very expensive. And so having those mini versions is key, and I would expect that to come in the near future. But I just wanted to show you a few other ways you can generate images with this new model. So of course now I'm most curious about how this new image model compares to Google's Nano Banana Pro. And I ran several tests on things like photorealistic images, memes, infographics, editing existing images, and other use cases I'll share in this video. And the very first one was just something very simple. Create a photorealistic high resolution image of elephants in Thailand. And then after about 30 seconds, this is what it came up with. Now. That's not a bad image by any means at all. And what I noticed right away is there is no evident watermark 
on these images from OpenAI. I think that's always been the case versus what you see from Nano Banana Pro is there's an evident Gemini watermark. Now these are very easy to remove, don't get me wrong there, but I'm just saying right from the generation within the platform, the watermark is not evident here. Now, what's interesting about this, and again, I entered this one after you know testing dozens of different use cases, so maybe I ran out of usage, is I came down here and I said, is this GPT image 1.5, the latest model? And it says, short answer, no. The image you received was generated using OpenAI's current image generation system, but GPT isn't an exposed or selectable model name. So I guess what I don't understand is that maybe this isn't the actual GPT image 1.5. It could be the predecessor GPT image one. So I wanted to call that out first, but from the very first test, I think Nano Banana Pro is head and shoulders here above what I got from this, from this output put within chat GPT. What I will say though, and what I actually like about GPT's image models versus Nano Banana is that you can actually edit these images right within the main interface here. And so if I go back and click cancel, click select area, you know, let's say I want to maybe edit this or remove this elephant right here and kind of circle this in, I could say remove this elephant from the image and it'll remove it from the image. Versus on Nano Banana, I'd have to come back here and chat with it and say remove the elephant on the left, keep everything else as is. And it's just, there's a little more extra steps here when you're editing images versus what you're doing inside ChatGPT. So I wanted to call that out first, but let's look at another example create a photorealistic high resolution image of Des Moines, Iowa, which is the city where I live. And I was actually really surprised by these outputs. So this is the chat GPT output, of course. And while this image doesn't look photorealistic, in my opinion, compared to the output that I got with Gemini or Nano Banana Pro, this looks way more photorealistic. But what's interesting about this is the placements look off, like the buildings look off, like these buildings don't exist. The capital placement looks off. These little things on the roads don't exist. So there's like little minute details. I obviously live here so I understand that versus what we're getting in this output, it looks more realistic in terms of what the buildings look like, where the buildings are. So I thought that was very interesting knowing the amount of data that Google has at its disposal to generate images like this with Google Maps, Google Earth. So I know that's just one example here of Des Moines, Iowa, which I know most of you or all of you probably will never test this type of example, but I just thought that that output was super interesting. And so now let's look at the example of infographics. As if you guys have seen my recent videos on Nano Banana Pro, which I'll leave in the video description below, one of its best features is the ability to generate these high quality infographics that are not only on brand, they're visually appealing, and best of all, the text is not even misspelled or misaligned. I mentioned this in my last video, this infographic blew me away. And all I did was I uploaded a logo for my client, gave it a two to three sentence prompt here with copying and pasting all the information from one of our blog posts. And then in a matter of about 30 seconds, generated this infographic, needed a little refinement, and then it came up with this. So is ChatGPT's new image model close to what we can get with Nano Banana Pro in terms of infographics? Well, let's find out here. Copy and pasted the exact same prompt, uploaded the exact same logo, and this is the image that I got. Yes, I tried zooming in and it's hard to see. And that's one thing I don't like about this interface is I can't really zoom in on these images. If you download it, you can zoom in a lot clearer that way. But I would say just from first glance, this is not bad by any means. This is definitely usable, but I think this infographic is still much better. And I know this is one example. There are a lot of nuances to what I'm working on versus what you guys are working on. But in that one example, I still think Nano Banana Pro has the edge. Although I will say this, ChatGPT in terms of where it was with GPT Image 1 or Dolly 3, this came a long way versus the infographics that you could generate before. But let's not stop there. Let's look at another infographic here. So I'm gonna pull up Nano Banana Pro where I uploaded a my personal brand logo for Ryan Dozer. And I basically just said the similar prompt with a different title, but this time I gave it a YouTube video URL. And then this is what Nano Banana Pro came up with. So not bad, my logo is a little distorted here, 
Um, the text is still spelled correctly. What I don't like is it has this YouTube URL. I would just say remove that if I were to follow up and actually use this. But besides that part on the bottom, uh, this isn't bad in my opinion. It's mostly on brand. None of the text is misspelled from what I'm seeing. And when I did the same thing inside ChatGPT, again, one thing ChatGPT has always struggled with is analyzing YouTube video URLs versus copying and pasting entire transcripts, which is what you had to do previously to get better outputs when it comes to YouTube videos. But regardless, I gave it the exact same prompt, and this is what ChatGPT came up with. Now, Besides the zooming in and zooming out issue, if I go ahead and save this image, it's a lot better. I actually like this infographic a lot. And now it's not necessarily on brand. There's a lot of random shades of green in this infographic, which doesn't really reflect my logo or branding, to be honest with you. But in terms of just the images here with the icons, I like the overall output visually a lot better than what Nano Banana Pro gave me here. Um, but I think this is a lot more crisper and it's more on brand than what ChatGPT generated here. But again, this isn't bad at all. And this is way better than the previous AI image models that OpenAI was using when it came to infographics. So I still think Nano Banana Pro does have the edge in infographics. So now let's look at image editing. And the first example I wanna share with you is editing memes. As memes typically do very well on social platforms like LinkedIn or X, this meme in particular did very well for me on LinkedIn, where I took this original image of this Simpsons meme where everyone's lined up for these shiny AI agents and only one person wants to learn how to do automations that actually produce ROI, true story by the way. So what I did is I went ahead and edited this, copy and pasted the same prompt and I plugged that into chat GPT. And then this is what I got after an iteration. So right here is the actual infographic that I shared with AI hype content and boring AI advice. So I replaced the text on those signs. And then within chat GPT, I did the exact same prompt, uploaded the exact same original image. And right away, it says this image generation request did not follow our content policy. So right away, and I'm going to show you this in the next few examples here, this image model appears to be more censored. And what's really interesting about this, if I just show you the next example, I uploaded an image from a wedding that I was at this past weekend at Disney World. I said, replace Mickey and Minnie with Donald Duck and Goofy, keep everything else the same. And once again, this image generation request did not follow our content policy. What's super interesting about this example is OpenAI's recent partnership with Disney to use its IP and basically train its Sora models to generate videos with Disney characters. Now, apparently that doesn't apply to images and it only applies to videos or maybe it hasn't fully kicked in yet. I don't know what the deal is, but when I asked this exact same thing to Nano Banana Pro, replace Mickey and Minnie with Donald Duck and Goofy, keep everything else the same, that's the original image. And then it came back with this. Pretty flawless, right? Obviously, my face might look a little distorted. Some of the people we're with aren't necessarily the same here. Um, but Donald Duck and Goofy are right there. Looks a lot like Donald Duck and Goofy to me. Um, and they actually generated this, or Nano Banana Pro generated this without any hiccups. And what's also interesting, again, is if I come back in here for another example and say transform this you know, image into a photorealistic holiday card, again, the request does not follow our policy. But I did the exact same thing inside Nano Banana, and it generated a holiday card that looks just like that. Very high quality output. So in terms of like censorship and guardrails, it almost just seems from these very few examples that I did, which this is an image of me. I understand Mickey and Minnie are in here for Disney characters and copyright and whatnot. Uh, it is not following or it is not completing these types of outputs. And again, what's really interesting to me is that recent partnership with OpenAI and Disney and how it didn't follow through on this particular example. So in terms of editing existing images, and I understand I should probably do a different example where there's no copyright involved here, uh, it appears that Nano Banana Pro still has a massive edge and is less guardrailed and censored than this new GPT image 1.5 model from OpenAI which is a stark turnaround considering Google Gemini's models used to be very censored and very guard railed. So maybe they're opening up the floodgates a little more, but I just wanted to show you those quick examples of real world use cases of editing images. Now this example came from OpenAI's website on this new chat GPT images where you can create a Christmas ornament of yourself, joyful bald man glass ornament. So it went ahead and actually called me bald. I don't know if I appreciate that, but 
I guess the truth is what it is. And so all I did was upload a headshot here and then copy and pasted the prompt from OpenAI's website. And then it generated this. That's, that's a very high quality image in my opinion, right? That actually looks exactly like me where I did the exact same thing on Nano Banana Pro, same prompt, same image. And then this is the output that it came up with. Now, that's not bad by any means, but that looks a lot less like me and is a less quality output for this specific example than what I got here from ChatGPT's new image model. Now, the very last example that I wanted to show you goes back to that holiday card and the last point I wanna make on this. So within Google Gemini, if you weren't aware here, so I'm actually just gonna pull up Gemini uh, from scratch and look at the options. If you weren't aware, within the tools, we have an option to create videos using VO3.1. Previously, this was not available in the Gemini app and it had to be accessed on another platform. But what you can do within Gemini is upload an image here. So this is that holiday card image that I uploaded and then you can generate eight second videos with VO 3.1. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this to show you what it looks like. So it's not perfect. I don't know why my friend's hand turned into a Mickey hand and not his normal hand. I don't know why VO 3.1 did that. So there are obviously little flaws there, uh, but not bad, right? And so where I'm going with this is that within ChatGPT, yes, they have Sora, but that's a whole other website. There is no option where if I come to the main interface here, click the plus icon, there's no option to actually generate videos using Sora right from the ChatGPT interface. I'm assuming that that's going to be added over time as time goes on. But as this moment, you are not able to do that, which you can do that using VO 3.1 inside Google Gemini's interface. So I know I went over that pretty quickly and I also know my examples and use cases are different than what you guys are working on. But I wanna hear your thoughts on ChatGPT's new image model in the comment section below. Do you like it better than Nano Banana Pro? What kinds of results are you guys getting? But if you've made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate you. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you found any value. And most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.